am Gay Lynn. I'm the Rhinestone Queen. This is part two in a three-part series of how to make a leotard. In part one, we talked about the most important part, the cutting of the leotard fabric. Part two is going to focus on assembling all of the pieces that we cut previously and how do we put that together to get the base of our leotard. And I'll also show you how to finish out the legs with elastic. I'm going to use a serger to do that, but I'll also always show you how to do it on a regular machine for the times I use a serger. So if you have a serger or don't, you'll be able to do it either way. Let's get started. I'm gonna sew this leotard together with a basting stitch on my sewing machine because I'm gonna do finished stitches on my serger. I'll show you how to do a finished stitch on the sewing machine as well. So to do a basting, I want to do a basting zigzag because it's stretch fabric. So when you sew in stretch, you usually want to use a stretch stitch of some sort. And zigzag is a great stretch stitch. So I'm going to set it on zigzag on my machine. I'm going to put it on the longest stitch I have, which on my machine is a four. And I want the stitch to be fairly narrow because I want it to be almost a straight line because I'm going to go over and do the finish seam and... I want this seam to be really inconsequential. So I'll put it, I want it wider than a one because a one would be too close to a straight stitch. So I'll just give it a two for my width. So a, a narrow, long zigzag is what I'm going for. Okay, let's go ahead and baste our seams in. I'm gonna put my foot down on the seam. By the way, I pinned the crotch together as well. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just sew a stitch straight down. I've got my foot on the edge. I'm sewing a pretty narrow stitch. It's not like when if you sew on regular fabric and you know about the 5 8 seam and you do that on on um, leotards for some reason, it's, you just sew a narrow seam. And then I'll go ahead and sew my two side seams up. I want you to notice that I'm not doing, if you are if you sew on regular fabric and you're not used to Lycra, you, you know you always do a back stitch when you start a seam and you do a back stitch when you finish a seam. I'm just doing a basting seam here, so I'm not going to back stitch. And the reason I'm not using a back stitch, first of all, it's a basting seam, so it doesn't matter. But second of all, the reason is because sometimes the Lycra will bunch up on you. And if it gets, if your seam ends up getting a little bunchy, and you've locked it at the front and the back, then you've got to rip something. Whereas if it ends up getting a little bunch, bunchy and you didn't lock it, you can just smooth it out with your fingers and before you do your permanent stitch. And so it helps keep everything nice and in place. So here's the side seam. And if you notice, I'm letting the machine guide. I'm just using my fingers to guide. I'm not using my fingers to pull, just to guide. Okay, so to do what I'm calling a, a, a permanent seam or a stretch, I want to do a stretch stitch. My machine, this is my favorite one on my machine, is this one that's blue right here. And to use, because this is, it's blue here on my machine, I see, I find the S1 that's blue. So I turn to the S1 to select it, and that's how I select the blue stitch. And then I just have to select my width. I'm going to go with a width of three because I, I want it to be a little wide. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and sew that stretch stitch in. I've got the, notice I've got the foot lined up, the fabric lined up right on the edge of the foot. I'm sewing in the center. And I just sew to the end and clip it. This stitch doesn't require a back stitch. So there's my seam. If you were sewing, let's say you were doing some sleeves in a sheer fabric. And now you have this big, all this fabric sticking out and you don't want that. Easy thing is just clip it right at the seam with your scissors and it'll give you, it'll give you a nice finish. Not quite as nice as putting it on the serger, but that looks like a real professional seam. And you can see the outside, it lays nice and flat. It still stretches. So nice seam. Okay, so we're ready to go with the serger. So I'm gonna go ahead and just finish all these seams with the serger. I put, I just take the uh, edge of the fabric, lift up the foot, stick it underneath, and I'm gonna trim off just a hair of fabric off the edge. The knife is on right here, and the fabric is that's over, whatever fabric is on the right side of that knife 
is going to get trimmed off. So. Make sure your fabric is smooth. See how I had that little bump in there? If you have the bump as it goes through the serger, you're going to end up with a bump in your fabric on your finished seam. So you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. And notice I just gently, with my fingers gently, don't pull. If you pull, it'll make your seams waffle. That's one seam done. And see, this, the reason I love the serger is look how nice and stretchy that is. It gives you a good stretch. Um, it's strong, it's durable, and it gives a good clean finish on the outside edge. I'm going to do that same basting stitch that we did earlier to sew the lining to the fabric around the leg openings and around the back. Something you do want to be conscious of is your seams. You want to make sure the seam is folded the same way everywhere you go. So what I'm doing is I'm I like to make my seams go front to back. So here's the back of the costume, here's the front. So I'm gonna fold this down this way as I sew over this seam. And I'll do the same for every seam. So that way you don't have, you know, on this seam, I don't have the, at the bottom edge, it's going in one direction, at the top edge, it's going in another direction. I want them to go in the same direction, both at the bottom and the top edge. So that's why I just go front to back. It just helps me stay consistent. I'm going to just pull it off and cut my thread and you can see it's basted nice and together and then I can pull all the pins out then we no longer have pins in this leotard which will be nice you know I was just looking at my leotard and I realized I didn't like that I didn't think the back was low enough so I folded it in half made my side seam made my edges match perfectly in the back and I know that this is center back I matched up my uh my seams on the leg and I went ahead and just cut a little smile out the back, about a, a finger and a half lower. So the next thing we're going to do is put elastic in the leg openings. Now, every pattern tells you how much elastic you need for the leg openings. This particular one has it inside the pattern guide. Most of them have it inside the pattern guide. So you just have to open it up and find where it tells you that. Uh, this one tells you right here, elastic measurement for leg opening for a size eight, it wants 16 and a quarter inches. So since we're doing a size 10, if I cut 16 inches, I know I'll have plenty enough elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut two pieces of elastic, 16 inches long. I just measure on my handy dandy ruler here. By the way, I want you to notice how nice the crotch seam looks since I basted by the way, I want you to notice how nice the crotch seam looks since I basted the basted the uh, leg openings in with the seam going in the same direction. That's going to make it, now that I put my elastic, it's going to make it um, lay flat and nice. To stitch this in, I'm going to, I have to sew the elastic in on the wrong side of the fabric. So I always start just past the crotch. Um, that way, if anything sticks out, it's hidden. It's not going to stick out, but if it's not as pretty right where they meet, it's hidden. I've set my machine on a basting zigzag, and I did want my width wider, so I've got my length still set at four, the longest length I have. But instead of a two width that we did these leg opening seams on and all the other basting we did, I put it on a three because the elastic's a little wider. By the way, this elastic width that I'm using is a three-eighths inch width. And that's the standard width that you use for most, uh, most edges on the guitar. So I sew that in and out. I don't use any tension just to get it locked in. Now I'm going to start using tension. This is important. Notice here's the front of the leotard. Here's the back. Where do you want the most, most tension is right in that cup of the rear end. So I'm going to use a little more tension. Remember, I had to cut it with a little bubble butt. Right here on the bubble, I'll use a little tighter tension, and everywhere else, I'll use about even tension the rest of the way. So I go ahead and pull just a little. Can you see I've pulled it where here's flat, and I've pulled it, what's that, maybe a 
an eighth of an inch out, maybe a quarter inch out. And pull it again. And now I'm getting to the bubble. So I'm gonna pull, instead of pulling just an eighth quarter inch out, I'm gonna pull probably almost a half. A little more tension on that bubble. Again, I'm sewing it right up against the edge of the seam. And so now I'm getting to the front, so I'll not pull quite as tightly, but still give it a, a nice little tug. What happens every time, every time we put it on the machine, this stretch ends up being, it stretches the elastic a little more and a little more and a little more. So I keep pulling. I fully expect to have at least an inch or so of overlap and have some I need to cut off. That's that you should have that. If you don't, you probably didn't pull tight enough. And I'll backstitch it and then I can go ahead and trim it. Now this is important. I, here's the excess, right? I have excess elastic. So I'm going to trim that off and I'm going to take this. I'm gonna to come to this piece that we're about to do, and I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie where it needs to pull off. So that way when I sew this other side in, I'll know how much I need to trim off so that both of my leg openings end up being exactly the same size. There's a couple of schools of thoughts on basting it in. I have a friend who makes dance costumes as well, and she doesn't, she doesn't baste any of her stitches in. She just goes right to her serger and sews her elastic in. You certainly can do that, but I've had to rip out too much elastic that I rather, if I'm going to rip something, I rather rip this little zigzag seam out than rip the serger seams out. Those are a little difficult. If you were doing this without a serger, actually at this point, you can just give a trim to your seams. Just trim the edges and you'll be ready for the next step. You don't have to have a serger to do this. You can do it without the serger, but the serger just makes a nice clean finish. So I, I use the serger. So I do need to show you when you're serging your seam, you want to make sure your knife is right up on the edge of the elastic. It needs to follow the edge of the elastic without cutting the elastic. So here we go. It may take a little practice, so you might want to try it on some scrap fabric the first time you do it. But it's really not hard. It's easy to get the feel for. And you just sew off the edge and, and clip it. But you can see how, gosh, I might need new scissors. Um, you can see how the edge, it makes a nice pretty finish. And when we turn that over, oh gosh, am I, I'm going to have to rip that little bit of zigzag out because you can see it, my basting stitch. But when you turn it over, you get a nice, a nice clean finish with the, uh, with that surged edge. Okay, so we'll start that zigzag stitch. I fold, fold it under, and I'm going to top stitch. It's always better to stitch from the top so you can see what your seam looks like on the, the part that's going to show. Start my stitch and I do back stitch on these because I want to lock the stitch in. Now I'm going to pull slightly. The elastic is going to help to hold it on this right side and I pull on the left side just slightly, just enough to give it tension so that it's flat and I don't have this happening where it bubbles over like that. We want it to just be a nice, smooth finish. When I get to the part where I had a little more tension, I might have to pull it a little bit forward to get, see how it's, it's real wrinkly right here. To straighten that out, I might have to pull a little bit forward and with the right hand and with my left hand smooth. I promise after you do one leotard, you'll have the feel for this. Got to clip threads. Can I get the other thread? There it is. Let me turn that over so you can see the finished leg opening. 
but there's a finished leotard leg opening. Doesn't it look just like what you would buy if you got a leotard from the store? It looks just as nice. Like I said, you can use that stretch stitch here if you prefer to do that. If you use a stretch stitch, you need to pull your elastic a little tighter because it does stretch the leg opening a little more. And you want this to be nice and, you know, tight on the body. I did want to show you if you prefer to sew it from the underside, you can do that as well. So long as you have the right color thread in the bottom. So now both legs are done. Well, we've got a nice finish on our leg openings. So that's done. Um, you can use the same technique from that we used to finish the leg openings to finish all of the rest of the edges. Or you can use this other technique that I'm going to show you where we're going to put a nice piped edge on all the edges so it'll finish like this and then there'll be spaghetti strap coming off of the edge just to give the costume the, the costume it's leotard give leotard a little more pop well we're almost done with this leotard please give me your feedback and let me know what you think about this video and what else you might like to see follow my channel and you'll get to see upcoming costume videos and please like my facebook page rhinestone queen costumes there's a ton of pictures out there i think you'll enjoy now it's time to move on to part three of this series so we can go ahead and finish out this leotard <music>